Ten years ago, I was in the hospital being diagnosed with ovarian cancer, stage 3C. I had been going to the doctor for maybe six months. I had been feeling a lot of discomfort, and I was thinking, is this perimenopause? Is this my poor diet? Do I need to exercise more? Turns out, about a month after that, I ended up in the emergency room. When the doctor finally came in, uh, she just came into the, the room and said, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And we're like, what? Maybe they should have admitted me, I don't know, but I'm glad they didn't. Because later that morning, Christy contacted our friend, Jen Callen, who had been diagnosed with ovarian cancer just a month earlier. And Jen said, I'm gonna go sit in front of their office and I'm gonna make sure that you get to see Dr. Drescher. After that, I was in really good care. I felt that we were a part of a team. We really were. We is my partner, Christy, and I, she's been my strongest advocate. When they came out and they couldn't do anything for her, they couldn't take any of the cancer out because it was wrapped around everything. She ended up being in the hospital for 10 days. We had family and friends come up and the whole room was full of flowers and I didn't leave her side for 10 days. I was always so independent thinking I could do everything on my own or we got this, we can do this. But our friends, I cannot believe how much they showed up. The group of friends I have is very special. And family that has stepped up. When I was in the hospital, people came in support of me. I couldn't do much and they're like, oh, we don't want to intrude. And But Christy said, no, you being here, friends and family is so important. When I'm too sick, she keeps the wheels turning, literally. She's the one that gets me to walk at least to the end of the block, to stay engaged in the world. And that's what she's really done for me. And I do my best to whatever I can do to, to bring a spark to her life too. It was really hard because she almost died once in there and she couldn't breathe and it was just terrible. One morning, a nurse walked up to me and said, I just want to let you know that all the nurses love coming into your room. They feel the love in the room, and they truly believe that love cures. When she comes out of chemo, she'd be down and out for a week at a time. I'd say, hey, you got to get up and give Bella a walk. And so even on days she didn't want to get up, I'd go, come on, let's get down, at least down to the end of the corner and back. And then all of a sudden, I, I mean, this woman can play pickleball generally eight days out from treatment. She's certainly the strongest person I've ever met in my life. You find some neat things about people. When this hits you, you fall in love more. Ovarian cancer patients have had a limited survivor rate. That I'm here for 10 years and, you know, we see the people, if the rib can run with all the, the beads around their neck, that inspires me to keep going. Many of those teams are for people who are not with us anymore. That just shows how important their friends and family have been, that they're willing 10, 15 years after the passing of their loved one to show up and raise money. The work that the Rivkin Center is doing, it's research specific for ovarian cancer. I would hope people could understand it costs money because it's really difficult work. So the next Rivkin summer run, it'll be 10 years. And I've pretty much been in treatment consistently. I've had the whole cornucopia of ovarian cancer drugs, but so far it's worked. I've persisted. That's what we have to do.